Back everybody, I'm Drone Tech, and uh, today I wanted to go over this clip that I just saw uh, from CNN of Brian Stelter spewing, uh, ironically, what I consider a big lie. He, he's constantly accusing his political opposition of this, but as far as I can tell, he is quite guilty himself as well as his network. And I'm going to go over all that, but real quick, I do want to implore you all, if you're interested in using a VPN uh, so that you can browse and not have to worry about being tracked or anybody knowing your identity, uh, I use Virtual Shield, and uh, you should too. And if you look right down there, uh, you'll see a URL to my link for Virtual Shield, and uh, you get 50% off. So check that out if you are interested in a VPN, which you should be in this day and age. From the former president's big lie blog posts to a fishy audit in Arizona, last year's U.S. election is still being screamed about. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I cannot be alone in, in seeing just the sheer hypocrisy of what he's saying. And I know, I know, like pointing out their hypocrisy. What good has that done us? It does us no good. But I can't just let this pass, okay? He, he's complaining that people are still, and what, are we three months into this presidency? Oh my God, three months in and we're still complaining about the election. That's weird because we just went through four years of nonstop complaining about the election, of nonstop conspiracy theories about uh, Russian conspiracy theories and the president being a Russian agent, which Brian Stelter accused him of himself. And as I've pointed out before many times, if you just go back and look at least uh, recent history, Every time a Republican wins, the Democrats claim it was a stolen election. They only claim that the election was good as, leg as legitimate if they win it. I mean, just go back and look at how the news media treated the Bush administration after they won in 2001 and continued to do after he won again in 2004. They referred to his administration as the Bush regime, implying that it was an illegitimate administration. Let's go to the Reverend Al Sharp. The Reverend Sharp, what do you make of this letter and this panoply of the left condemning the Bush regime. Access Ashley at msnbc.com just happens to be our address and you just happen to be using it. So let's read some of your emails, shall we? Let's start with Pamela. Pamela's got a great one tonight. The Bush regime rhetoric gets goofier and more desperate every day. The Bush uh, administration is crumbling. Bush is falling into polls. By the time the fall comes around, there's going to be quite a gap. I'm not worried about Bush being reelected. And uh, if you look at our website, Chris, votenator.org, you'll see how we take a, apart the, book, uh, the Bush regime in ways that the Democrats should emulate. As one of her main tenets, part of her economic blueprint to restore the middle class, because no one pays attention to the middle class. I don't know if you knew that. It's not as if every politician panders endlessly to the middle class or anything. You would agree, though, that the middle class hasn't fared quite as well under the Bush regime as oh, uh, please. I, I wealthy would, I would agree that the government really isn't in, in charge of the economy. Tom Ridge, you are a huckster. Tom, I'm not interested in doing an interview, and I'm not interested in reading your book, but I am interested in to know why you didn't speak up earlier, like before the midterm in 2006. The Bush regime was still in power. Bush, Cheney, Rummy, the whole crowd was still there. That this is about the working family that George Bush, over the last eight years, you just talked about how many jobs were created in George Bush's regime only one million jobs have been created in this whole eight years net. The GOP is erecting new barriers to voting in some states and the newly ousted Liz Cheney is calling out her party. <laughs> okay, uh, and some of you are going to get mad that I keep stopping this, but I have to, and you kind of have to do this for YouTube anyway. But uh, so he says that Republicans are putting up barriers to voting. I I'm sorry, that's just not true, okay? 75% uh, of Americans agree with me that getting an ID is a simple thing to do in four years. Anybody can go and do that, or even in two years, if, if you're going to be voting in the midterms. So it, it's quite easy. And at this point, you can get the, you can get a voting ID for free. Like, if this was really an issue, I mean, it's not really that hard to resolve. You simply, when you're doing your voter registration drive, you simply sign people up for IDs. Sign them up right there for free. They get them mailed. Done. But no, this is a big lie that Brian Stelter and the other Democrat state media propagandists are spewing on a daily basis, repeating over and over and over just because they know that repetition will simply make it true in the minds of millions of Americans. She says Donald Trump is, uh, is very much willing to unravel the U.S. democracy to get back to power someday. And all of this news, all of it, has stoked partisan squabbling.
I, I'm, I don't understand how, if he were to run for president, how that's unraveling democracy or how questioning the previous election is unraveling democracy. At least if we're going based off the standards that Democrats are always held to because in 2016, Dianne Feinstein, members of the media, uh, other Democrats were trying to get electors to not vote for Trump. They were trying to get them to undemocratically ignore the vote tallies and and instead vote for Hillary. Oh, but no, 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 that's not that's not an attack on democracy. Even though uh, Hillary Clinton said before the election, and we're all well aware of this, and it, w it wasn't just her said that questioning election results was an attack on democracy. Yet that's exactly what they did for four years, right? But all of it is bigger than partisan politics. It's really about the future of America's democracy. That's why newsrooms need a democracy beat. Oh. As media critic Dan Frumkin wrote here, he used this phrase a few months ago, and so did Michael Cowdero in a Vanity Fair. He said the beat involves voter suppression, extremism, election disinformation. Whew. It's quite a stew, a very newsworthy stew. And my next... <laughs> well, let's take a look at what this is. Perhaps major media news organizations should consider a democracy beat providing sustained coverage of GOP voter suppression, anti-democracy efforts, neither of which are true. There's no... Uh, evidence of widespread voter suppression uh, or anti-democracy efforts, whatever that is, along with far-right extremism, white nationalism, election disinformation. So you see what they're doing here. The media, they're just, because the media clearly is already like against all these things. It, it's clearly aligned with the Democrat Party and with the left, increasingly far left, against uh, their political opposition and they're trying to connect white nationalism, far right extremism, all these like horrible monstrous things into like their political opposition. That's what their political opposition is. And so essentially what they're doing, <laughs> they're attacking democracy, even though we're not a democracy. I know everybody's going to say that we're a republic. But the truth is we're a little bit, uh, we're a little in the middle there. We're kind of a uh, mishmash of both things. But essentially what they're trying to do is wipe out political opposition. They're trying to wipe out dissent. Uh, opposing views. They want to have all the power, all the time, the only voice, the basically the information, basically the Ministry of Information. I mean, we're, they're going full Orwell. And what you're seeing in here is that people realize this. They see the media doing this, uh, but they have to put out these like rationalizations for it. Uh, these justifications. I talk about that all the time. The left is dangerous because they just seem capable of rationalizing anything. Voila. This is what I'm talking about, folks. That's all this is. That's all Brian Stelter's about to do. Rationalize ridding the country of political opposition to the Democrat agenda. And to them, that is, that's democracy. <laughs> if you're erasing the voice of half the country, 75 million or more Americans, that you think that's democracy? You think that you're uh, defending democracy? This is obviously absurd. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to check me out on some alternate platforms, you can find all those links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow.